Well, welcome to our candlelight service. It's great that you were able to join with us tonight. This is, of course, a candlelight service unlike any that we've ever had. Uh, but here we are, uh, and each in our own homes, with the exception of a few of us here. And yet, there's one constant in this theme of tonight that ties in with the other services that we have had as well, that we are together. We're together in the spirit, the unity that the Holy Spirit gives us. And so a welcome to you. You know, I think one of the interesting things about our congregation is that the candlelight service has so often happened a few weeks before Christmas. And in a way, maybe it feels a little bit premature. Shouldn't we be looking at all of this Christmas week? Uh, there are historical reasons for why that happened. But for us tonight, I think in the midst of the darkness around us, the short days and the long nights, and also with all of the other changes that, that we've been experiencing this last year, we look to, we look to the living God uh, to be a reminder of his presence and his light. Um, as we begin, I do have a few announcements uh, to make. And we are going to try our best to navigate some of the surprises that will even come up as we go. Uh, but I want you to know that as you're joining, this is a Zoom service. And so you will be able to view each other through this. At the same time, we have the goal of making this a live streamed service. And as we are trying to do the live streaming, uh, we are trying to maintain some of these connections as well. Uh, but it does mean a very important piece uh, for us to recognize that if you unmute, this is a recording, and you are going to make an appearance in the service. And we just ask that you stay muted in the service. Uh, and then afterward, we do invite you to join us for a time of hot apple cider or hot cocoa, whatever warm beverage you have at home, uh, that you would be able to join and that would be the time that you can unmute and to visit with other people and so please just a reminder to unmute as we go uh, but also as we begin this time this is a candlelight service and we invite you to get your own candles uh, there'll be an opportunity for you at the end of the service to light your own candles as well to participate in that way and so in this service uh, we have pre-recorded songs, we have readers in their homes, and all of this is going to lead us to encounter Jesus, the light of the world. And so, as we begin, I invite you to join me in prayer. Emmanuel God, we are here tonight looking for you. We come to cradle the holy in our arms, to hear the newborn cry of the divine creator, to see you decked out in flesh. We're here to consider the mysterious, to sense angels and to catch a glimpse of the star of all stars. We have need of such things, God, all that's brilliant and bright, all that merges mystery with the manger. But we have more need of your presence that is always with us. Come again, Emmanuel God to dwell among us. Bring us your grace and truth. Amen. And we're going to begin with a song, Come Light Our Hearts, and we invite you, as you're muted, uh, to join in singing from where you were.
The darkness, creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, a formless mass cloaked in darkness. But the spirit of God was hovering over its surface. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that it was good, and God said, Let bright lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. There will be signs to mark out the seasons, the days, and the years. Let their lights shine down upon the earth. And so it was. God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make people in our image. They will tend and steward all of life, the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the livestock, wild animals, and small animals. So God created people in his own image. God patterned them after himself. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and told them to multiply and fill the earth. <clears throat> then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was excellent in every way. And God said, It is good. It is very good.
the darkness, sin enters into the world. The Lord planted a garden in Eden and filled it with all sorts of beautiful trees that produced fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil with a warning. You may freely eat any fruit in the garden except fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of its fruit, you will surely die. The serpent tempted the woman, causing her to question God's goodness and God's warning. Instead, he said that her eyes would be opened so that she would be like God, knowing good and evil. She and her husband took the fruit and ate it. And at that moment, their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. What began with the first parents carries on in each of us, questioning the giver, desiring to know what is too much for us to bear. When we look for freedom and pleasure apart from God's goodness, we trap ourselves and lose the gift of joy. When we look for life away from our creator, we are left with guilt and shame. A tiny flame, God makes a promise. 
our world, fallen into sin, has lost its first goodness. But God has not abandoned the work of his hands. While justly angry, God did not turn away from a world bent on destruction, but turned to face it in love. With patience and tender care, the Lord set out on the long road of redemption to, rec re to reclaim the lost as his people and the world as his kingdom. Remembering the promise to reconcile the world to himself, God joined our humanity in Jesus Christ, the eternal word made flesh. He is the long-awaited Messiah, one with us and one with God, fully human and fully divine, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Light of Advent Candles, God's Promise. Jesus is our good news, a prophecy from Isaiah 61, from which we will now read, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus is our King, a prophecy from Isaiah 9. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Isaiah 7, verse 14. Jesus is our God, a prophecy from Isaiah 7. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Jesus is our peace, a prophecy from Isaiah 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he shall, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and the little child shall lead them. We light the Christ candle because Jesus, the light of the world, has come. Hear these words from John 1, verses 14 and verses 5 to 6. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A warming light. Christmas is not always easy, and especially in 2020, our hearts and minds go to those who are isolated, those who are exhausted or fear-filled, those who are sick, those who are mourning loved ones lost this year, or reminded of their death once again. In our own congregation this year, we have mourned the deaths of Eileen Sneep and Sharif Ghulam Masih, as well as other loved ones in our lives. This year has once again reminded us of those who are dislocated, both nearby and across the globe, those who are impoverished, those who are devastated by war, those who have fled their homes and countries, and those who are part of separated families longing for reconnection. We have also seen division and anger and fear and violence. And we pray too for an end to polarization, mistrust, pride, and the unwillingness to seek restoration. There is much in our world to lament. So we light a blue candle for a blue Christmas. And we remember that Emmanuel came to be with us in the midst of all of this too. And so we offer this prayer from the Iona community. When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us and no one knew, only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of today's world? Not the friendly darkness, as when sleep rescues us from tiredness, but the fearful darkness 
in which people have stopped believing that the war will end or that food will come or that a government will change or that the church cares. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people from death and despair? Will you come into the quietness of this city, not the friendly quietness as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence when the phone has not rung, the letter has not come, the friendly voice no longer speaks, the doctor's voice says it all. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to embrace your people? And will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives? We ask this because the fullness we long for depends on being open and vulnerable to you. Like you were to us when you came, wearing no more than diapers and trusting human hands to hold their maker. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came, you crept in beside us. Do the same this Christmas, Lord. Do the same this Christmas. Amen. A spreading glow. You know, all through scripture, we have this theme of darkness and light. And for much of the metaphor of darkness, it's a reality that represents chaos and shame and alienation and loss and pain. And in the midst of all of that, we are not holding back in naming those truths where we still see echoes of darkness at play in our own lives and in this world. Especially in 2020, we have seen the darkness appear in new ways. And the purpose in the midst of the darkness is, is that a light would expose what is dark. And so we have seen light exposing places of darkness in new ways again this year. It sometimes came from the Centers for Disease Control locally and around the world and researchers who are highlighting the way that COVID-19 transmits even before people have symptoms. It's exposing the selfishness and the privilege that has laid us all bare through this whole time. Some of that, uh, maybe we made light of it with people hoarding toilet paper early on, um, or even right now where privileged nations are lining up and further up in the queue for the vaccines uh, ahead of other underprivileged countries, or how nations um, we're exposing the privilege at play, even around racism globally, and then highlighting that even in our own country, Canada, even in British Columbia, even in Vancouver, even in our own congregation, even in us. And along with that, we've also experienced the darkness of our vulnerability realizing the limits of our own health, realizing the things that we had taken for granted and taking security in, were not necessarily there for us. And along with that, also we've been reminded too of our own vulnerabilities of loneliness and isolation. But here's the good news, that in the midst of all of this, as I said just a few moments ago, the purpose of light is to expose the darkness and chase it away. And that is the hope that we claim at Christmas, that the Lord turned his face to this world, to our lives, his face with love, 
that Christ came to be light, to bring peace to the world, peace to each heart, peace into each relationship, peace into each place of his creation, that at the beginning God said it is good. And so as we hold this whole story in our hands, looking back at the very good beginning and the tragedies since, and as we look ahead in anticipation of God with us in just a few weeks, and as we look even further ahead with the second advent of Christ's return, I pray that come Christmas morning, we will be able to sing with all our hearts, joy to the world, the Lord is come. And that he has come to undo the curse as far as that curse has been found. Let's hang on to that good news today. And we're going to now sing about that piece um, of that first night. It came upon a midnight clear. Uh, let's join in this song together. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Christ. Christ is the light of all lights, and we bear that light in our lives. One candle may not shed very much light, but many candles, and let me add, in many places tonight, many candles in many places add to that light. And so together as a community of God's people, the church, we bring the light of each to become the light of all. Together we share the light of Christ, lifting the darkness of doubt, despair, fear that darkens the world by pointing to a light that cannot be extinguished. Jesus' words, neither do you light a candle or hide it under a bushel, but put it on a candlestick so it gives light to all that are in the house. Let us, and let me invite you now, in your own homes to take a candle and light it and let us lift our candles high as the light of the world let us accept our call to take it out into all the world we're now going to have a song christ be our light and uh, those on zoom will be able to see each other and enjoy each other seeing uh holding the candles but let's Hold this light, reminding ourselves and reminding each other that Christ indeed is our light.
Here we are already at the end of our service, but we are holding our lights high. And we give thanks for Christ, who is the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness. Uh, before we go, I just do have a few announcements. And one is to invite those who are on this service right now to remain after the service. And if you do have some hot cocoa or hot apple cider to stay behind, let's spend some time reconnecting with each other by Zoom. And also, we do invite you and invite you to invite others uh, to join us on Christmas Day at 10.30 a.m. for a Christmas Day service. And this will also be a live stream service, uh, a similar format to tonight. And we do hope that in whatever context that you find yourself in, that you will be able to join with us as we come together to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so now, as you go bearing the light of Christ in your hearts and in your homes, may the God who said that light shine out of darkness, make his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. May you hold that light. May you hold it closely in your hearts. May you remind yourself in your own thoughts and your own patterns that it is Christ's light that guides your path. And whatever context you find yourself right now and in the weeks ahead, we invite you to also shine that light to those who are weighed down by darkness.